We recruit and select the best and the brightest osteopathic medical students. We train them in the most recent advances in medical knowledge. We very carefully develop their palpatory skills in osteopathic diagnosis and treatment, all for the purpose of getting them prepared for their clinical years. And yet, as they integrate themselves into their rotations, they're able to apply that cognitive domain, apply that medical knowledge to their patients. Yet, the use of their osteopathic diagnosis and treatment skill may be at best intermittent or sporadic. And then this may lead to erosion of the confidence in their palpatory skills, may actually not avail them to the possibility of developing a maturity in their clinical application of those skills, and in some cases, they actually lose it, never to use it again. So, welcome, and allow me to share with you some of our thoughts on how to address this issue. My co-presenters today are Dr. King, Dr. Kirsch, and in the audience is Dr. Schwartz. We have a team at ATSU of the OPP group, and so we've developed this over the last few years. So what I wanted to tell you today is about the reasons for the declining use of and supervision of OMT, the highlights of what is happening in some of the COMs and their solutions to increase the use of OMT, as well as tell you, of course, about our program we call the Top 10. And then, most importantly, I want to have a participation of the audience, and I want you to begin to actually get a feel for how it might be uh, experienced if you are actually training uh, somebody like an MD or somebody that's not familiar with osteopathic principles and practice. So let's take a look, though, at the current climate. Let's take a look at um, what has been addressed in the literature, and it has been documented that there is a declining use of OMT in practice, that there's a lack of thoroughness in the hospital osteopathic structural exams, as well as there is declining use documented for OMT in hospital settings and rare documentation of structural findings. And what are the reasons? Well, increasing reliance on prescriptive medications, anecdotal basis for OMT, so the scientific basis hasn't kept pace, increased basic science hours in the curriculum, so then you have a reduction of the OPP contact hours. And then you have incoming students not necessarily motivated for osteopathic medicine because of their perhaps more interest in getting into an MD school. But then perhaps there's some other reasons as well. Well, let's take a look. Well, currently we have this description that Dr. Govitz would say is a craft teaching model where you have the master that, te that teaches the student how to perform and then that student in, imitates that master until they have this desired proficiency. But is that really what's happening today? Where is the master in the third and fourth clerkship year? Well, if you have a declining use of OMT by your DO preceptors, then the master is not there, as well as if you have your mixed preceptors mostly MDs that are now training your students, then you also do not have a master in the osteopathic principles and practice. And from the student's point of view, perhaps they would say that the declining use might be that, first of all, in the larger half of the slide, that they just don't have the time. Well, how do you make it efficient? How do you make it not cumbersome to them? Then additionally, though, they would say it's discouraged by their attending or that they don't feel comfortable. And how do you actually now be able to address that issue? So preclinically, 73% believe that they're prepared to conduct structural examinations and 71% believe that they were prepared to use OMT prior to them getting into their clinical rotations. Pre-graduation, 64 to 73% report few opportunities to use these skills during clinical rotations, and that their plan for the use then is declining to 25%, and it may be even more. So what are some of the suggestions then that have come 
into the literature? Well, a structured OPP curriculum that extends from clerkships into the residency training programs. Make it more formal, make it more specific. Provide educational sites in which they can hone their skills as distinctive DOs. But where are those sites going to be? Well, as an example, there has been a discussion about the West Virginia school where they have an OMM student clinic and they actually have an opportunity to have their skills supervised uh, before their um, clinical rotation. So this builds more confidence before they launch into those rotations. And then at New Jersey, they have a required third year one OMM clerkship. They have an in-hospital consultation service. And then family practice preceptors will get an annual faculty development in OMM. But does this address the issue? In Ohio, they have champions at 11 of their core sites, and they're going to have this OMM emphasis. But does that actually encourage the students to apply it to their patients? And then certainly in KCOM, in the Missouri campus, they have an education day where they address how to integrate OPP in a theoretical fashion. But it may be theory 